So um, what most people are most interested in is how it works. Yep. So we would like to give you a live demonstration of how that works. Um, so if you could bear with us a moment, we're gonna shift cameras and just kind of reorient a little bit. And then are you gonna switch to that? And do I have to go yeah. off? I am on air, and I think you What's go that? off. Now you can go off. Okay. Are you on there? Yep. Okay. Okay, so now we have the view of the motorcycle. Um, just going to turn this on. The wonder link snaps in like uh, just like your nav mount and will lock in, or sorry, your, your nav six or nav five. Um, And then from there, um, sorry, I'm just gonna I'm gonna walk through the pairing process with you guys. So, okay, so it's whited out, Keith. I don't think anybody can see that. Mm. So. There you go, uh, somewhat. If you folks are having issues trying to see that, essentially in your Bluetooth settings menu, you're gonna see a entry for Wonderlink and Keith has now selected that. And that's actually the Wonderlink dashboard. But what we wanted to show you is how the Wonder Wonderlink works is it, it uh, shows up as a general keyboard, meaning you can scroll through your phone and unfortunately the white space, oh. um, yeah, it's, we, we beg your pardon, but I don't know if you can see what Keith is tired. He's uh, using the Wonder Wheel to actually toggle through his available apps, and he's going to navigate his way over to the Wonderlink app and uh, go ahead and turn the Wonderlink on. And there you go. There's essentially the dashboard, so to speak, and you can see the real-time data there. Now, uh, in adjunct to that, we've also added some navigation applications, some media playing application, and um, there's going to be future application. Mm -hmm. Why we would do that and not just use, let's say, Google Maps per se, is even though Android supports keyboard uh, mouse functionality, a lot of the apps are specific to touch screen, and they don't really allow for the, for the, for the general keyboard setup. So Keith has, has, has essentially accessed the, the, the different applications and made them so they are good viable platforms for a general mouse. And then I'll let, I'll let Keith uh, demonstrate a little bit there for you. So I'll, I'll just put it in the, the cradle now so you can see it. Yeah, um, that's good. In the cradle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just gonna go over each screen one by one. Um, so this, is the main data display um, right now? It's it's a static grid. Um, one of the one of the things that's come out of our beta testers are they want customization here, um, different grid layouts, multiple grid pages, um, a TFT dash like uh, view. Um, so it's going to be one of the first things I work on. Um, you know, once once we get past the Kickstarter, um, but uh, yeah. You, you see your typical engine temp, ambient temp, gear, odometer, trip one, trip two. Um, the front and rear tire pressure actually don't actually get sent until the bike rolls a few hundred feet down the road. Um, the other thing is you'll notice this little um, fault icon. And if you notice on the dash, there's faults now. And it's kind of washed up. Here. Oh, sorry. Um, um, fortunately, what you, you <laughs> can't really see here is um, there's three faults being displayed. Um, the ABS self-diagnosis not complete, the ASC self-diagnosis not complete, and uh, I'm currently low on fuel. Um, all three of those um, alerts oh, are, are, are on the screen. Oh, there you go. So we'll um, go back here. Um, some of the functions intentionally aren't controlled by the Wonder Wheel. Um, it's safety. Um, we don't really think you need to um, be trying to uh, uh, view, your, view your data logs and stuff like that. Um, 
from the wonder wheel. Um, um, but show them what you can with the wonder wheel, Keith, like the yeah. media in the car. So um, the next page is the media page. This media page will control whatever active Android media player you have running, um, as long as they implement the standard API um, for control. What we found is all your popular apps do. Um, I've tested Spotify, Pandora, Sirius XM, Google Play, um, Music. Um, all of them have, have worked great through this interface. So you'll see the album art, you know, artist, song title, album, you know, your typical things. Um, and then with the Wonder Wheel, you can control, you know, your, your fast forward, you can hit um, back and, and forth. Oh, sorry. Um, previous song, um, next song, pause, play. Um, the next page is, is just a, a magnetic compass. Um, big, um, you can display it in degrees and in cardinal. Um, that, that compass is actually using your phone's compass. Um, this is what we call a quick task page. Um, this is something we're working on too. Um, we've got a lot of feedback that uh, um, people feel there's a lot of wasted space there and uh, maybe we can come up with a, like a grid layout or something. Um, but these are you know, common tasks we feel that you might wanna do from the motorcycle. Um, navigations, launch your, your favorite navigation app. Um, launch it, Keith. Oh. So I, I use Google Maps. Um, they will. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't see it. It's washed out. But he has, uh, you know, Google Maps as you yeah. would expect to find uh, in any Android phone. And we'll go back and um, go home. Basically, you have a setting that uh, you can set your home address as a quick uh, launch, and this will launch and, and, and route you. Um, and uh, you, you probably won't see this either, but it's it's routing me to my house, which I'm already here. Um, we'll go back. Um, call favorite number again. It's a it's a setting. You can set whatever number you want. A quick call from your from your phone. And um, just to take a step back, um, the idea is you you pair your phone also to a headset. Um, I have a um, Bluetooth uh, Chatterbox X1. Um, but any Bluetooth headset will work for you. Yeah, um, well, it'll work with the Senna. A lot of people have asked about the Senna. It works with the Senna. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's that's how we that's how you get the audible alerts and, and um, you know navigation routing information. Um, call contact. Um, we'll go through um, a list of your contacts, um, and then from there you can call them. Um, Take a photo. Now, this is what Wayne was saying, where your camera would need to be oriented properly, you know, maybe off to the side if you have a larger phone or uh, mounted um, in portrait mode. Um, and then you could just take a, take a picture here. And uh, it's, it's there and in my camera roll. Um, we also have video recording. Um, this will, again, if your phone's oriented in a way where, it, you know, the video is going to be acceptable, you can just kick off a recording and it will run in the background. Unfortunately, background recording is only functional on Android. Um, Apple will not allow such things. Um, so on the iOS version, you would just, you'd have to stay on that page. And, you know, um, if you left the page, the video recording would stop. Um, the next one is trip log. Triplog will log um, not only your um, latitude, longitude, altitude, speed, but it also logs every um, bit of data that we've um, we've gleaned from the motorcycle, um, uh, it, including stuff that isn't represented on that data grid. Um, um, volt, battery voltage, um, auto trip, um, and. Uh, a few others I can't think of off the top of my head, um, but it's all uh, in in stored in a CSV format or, or a spreadsheet format um, that you can then um, import into whatever spreadsheet program or um, 
there's this great software called Dashware where you can take your video and render it along with your, your data you acquired um, or GPS visualizer. Um, uh, it, it's just uh, in, a, in a very easy to work with format that you could really do without whatever you'd like with it. Um, and then uh, save a waypoint, um, pretty obvious. Um, and then uh, voice assist. So th what this will do is um, bring up um, Google Voice Assistant. Um, mine uh, apparently needs to be set up, but it's, it did launch. Um, but that's how you give it voice commands. Um, let's see. I guess the next thing I'd like to show you is the is some some data viewing. Um, first, we'll look at it at a trip log I did here. It's it's not the the most interesting trip log, but um, you'll get the idea that um, essentially it will it will uh, sorry. Um, Anyways, there's a there's a satellite map at, at the top that you can see, and, and below it is a is a is a textual summary of of your trip. Um, so like the date it was recorded, total distance, total duration, average speed, max speed, amount of gear shifts, amount of brakes, front and rear, ambient temp, min, max, average, engine temp, min, max, average, um, and then from here you can either share it. Um, so it will use the share function of your phone. So email or save it to your Google drive, or um, you can delete the, um, the actual log from here. And the waypoint side is, is, is going to be very similar. Um, um, a map and the date recorded, latitude and longitude. And from there, you have options to share it. You know, you can send it over in a text message to your writing buddies, um, open it in your, your favorite map app, or again, delete it if you're done. And the, the little Bluetooth icon at the top gives you your, your current connectivity status to the, to the Wonderlink. So, I'm trying to think. I think that's pretty, you know, that's the meat and potatoes of the functionality. Essentially, what you can do is manipulate your phone in any which way you want with the Wonder Wheel. Um, and then Keith has come up with what we feel are essential things that you would need while you're riding that are optimized to be uh, uh, manipulated um, via the Wonder Wheel versus just attempting to manipulate, per se, Google Maps, which you spend a real hard time trying to actually uh, do anything in Google Maps via the Wonder Wheel, just simply because it's, it's optimized for touch, touch screen um, interface. So again, we take the most essential things that we thought would be needed while you're motorcycle riding and optimize them for the for the wonder wheel and i think that's a really great explanation i think it's pretty yeah. thorough so anyway there's a little bit of work that needs to be gone you know um we've got some great beta testers and a special thank you to martin um martin's been fantastic he has a ton of great ideas and he's working frantically to keep <laughs> up with all of his suggestions and we'd like to hear other ones. The, the biggest ones we've heard so far are, you know, let's make that data a little bit more viewable by really maximizing screen size and getting everything bigger. The other thing I think Keith has been hearing is, you know, can we get more of a dash look versus just the numeric, um, you know, like a data table? Can, can we actually make like a, 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 you know, a dashboard, so to speak, a, a graphical dashboard? So. That um, will be very easy to accomplish, but it's not at the top of our list to do at the moment. And Keith is actually going to work on towards creating an open source API where people can set up their data any way they'd like to view it. If you want the data table, great. If you want to make your own kind of dashboard, great. We'll uh, give you access to what you need to kind of format the data in a way you think is reasonable and let you select what data that you want shown. And uh, with that said, um, moving on more towards the hardware end of it, I'm gonna have Keith take that guy off. 
And uh, so essentially what we have is we have an interface uh, that will uh, take your, um, yeah, if you could leave that up to okay. because I'm going to test the charging. So uh, essentially, you know, it's a two-part system. It's uh, it's an app, a uh, software app that's mated to our hardware. And 